Good morning everyone and welcome back to another episode. Thank you so much for joining us. We are still in the boatyard but we are getting very very close to splashing and we have a fair few jobs to go but we're not going to do all of them before we leave but what we did do is we opened up a job which kind of turned into a bigger job than we thought or we anticipated so anyway I'm going to just make a mud water and then we'll get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. You guys tried mud water? Mud water is a delicious coffee alternative that we love drinking on board Catalpa. It is full of medicinal mushrooms and yummy goodness. So it's really good for you. That's how we start our day every day. It's our morning ritual. <laughs> We were just doing a tiny little job at the back of the boat and I wasn't even going to film it because I was like, oh, it's just a fixing a little bit of decor and wasn't going to be that exciting because, hey, we we're going to do it really quickly. <laughs> Famous last words. Anyway, it's turned into a goddamn tin of worms and we're now downstairs and we've got to open shit up. And it's going to take longer than a couple hours. Yay for us! <laughs> Why? We think we're on top of something and then boom! Boom! Something else. Here it is, we're gonna take our roof lining off. We're in our bedroom. I had to clear all of the stuff off the shelves because what we were doing up top was just doing a little bit of rock that we found. There was a soft spot on the deck and Lee thought, we'll just open up a little bit, we'll put an inspection hole in there and it'll be easy. We'll just clear it all out, it'll be fine. But what we found was that rot was running way back further than what we initially thought and there's a cleat that was very loose. It turned out to be this big has gone to that big. <laughs> One of those jobs. One of those days. One of those days we thought we were there. We were just having a crazy day going oh yeah we'll just do that little job at the back. Yeah. Anyway. All right. We're in it now. Can I have a little flathead screwdriver, darling? So I can you sure can. Light. We can cut this out. Put some board in. Glass back over it. Redrill, reset our... Probably put a bit of G10 under that so it's super strong where the cleat is. Uh, it's at the moment. Potential of just ripping that whole thing out. If we were relying on that cleat. Which we have in the past. Mm -hmm. We were side tied to a boat with that cleat. Yeah. We've been tied to marinas with that cleat. Uh, I'm going to cut it out and um, some board in and glass back over it. About to get messy. Our room is a big disaster. All right, so you can see our problem here. You can see there's water around these bolts. Now, in the construction of this, you can see that's rotten under there now. But in the construction of this, when they drilled these four holes, they should have oversized these and then filled them with epoxy and then re-drilled. But they didn't. So as a result, the water's gone in and started into the core as opposed to if it was epoxy, it would have just been maybe a drip inside, reseal it, job done. But now we're gonna have to cut this out and get rid of this bit of rot here. Enough flapping the gums, fix her up. We cut it open and removed all the rot and decided to leave it open to dry out fully before we closed it up. So on to the next job. Another day in the boat yard, we've got the epoxy out. We've just got little bits of rot around penetrations on the boat, which in this case is our sea cows. So we're epoxying up and just cleaning up. Some have rot, some don't, but we've got to it early enough that it hasn't done much damage, so like, just about every penetration needs to be inspected and if not resealed, whether it's butyl or 4200, depending on the, the type of penetration. For instance, the chain plates, when we do them, we'll use butyl tape so there's movement, but certain ones we'll use 4200 if there's no movement. We're getting there slowly. All right, start mixing up. We remove the vent boxes and any of the rods. You can see all the bolster core exposed. This is our cat friend that wanders around and visits from time to time. Like any penetration in the boat, we prep them by removing any old sealant and rot and clean them up ready for epoxy. Put some blocks in here to fill it up with epoxy blocks. 
and then fill all around it. That's our worst one. I think it comes back about a finger or so. All right, got a little bit of thin viscosity epoxy. This is rot fix, so anywhere where there's been a bit of water ingression, I'm gonna just put this in that soaks into where the water has trailed. Obviously it's been dried out where we're doing it and then we'll follow up with whatever epoxy mix we're going to do over the top of that and fill up. Alright, I've got to get this in. By using a syringe, Dad can get the epoxy in deep so that it can run into any crevices that need sealing. For the one that had a fair bit of rot, Dad is filling the hole with some epoxy coated timber to fill the cavity where the rotten deck was removed. So this is a West System epoxy mixed with some white dye so that it matches the deck except it's way whiter than the deck. Yeah, wrong colour but hey, we're going to paint the deck so it's just a temporary, just we're more worried about water ingress so just a sealing process now and we're going to redo the decks but we've got to get all the decks prepared properly first. We love the tropics and in the tropics you get a lot of rain so it's important for us before we get to these parts of the world our deck and any penetrations are fixed correctly. Well we're just putting some temporary caps over our old rottened out derayed boxes. We're here and there was rot going into the core so we've just sealed them up for this for now until we get some plates and work out what we're going to do here. Hopefully it sticks because we're using starboard and I know nothing sticks to this stuff but I'm hoping just a bit of butyl will create a gasket just temporarily until we get this sorted. So like Dad said, this is temporary until we can afford to replace the cowls. It doesn't look great but it's watertight for now. Now going to replace some through holes. They're like air conditioners and water maker brines and that. We weren't going to do them while we're here but because we are going to be here longer this is a job that we're doing today. He's also replacing some plastic fittings on our Seawater Pro. Two things I wanted to do was we had one of these exact ones lose its head, snapped off its head up top. It was just, all it was was just the drain on our seat but once that snapped it actually dripped into our kitchen so we replaced that on a previous episode and I've noticed the same vintage of skin fittings they are above waterline so it's not the biggest issue if they did snap but like Sarah said while we're on the hard we'll just replace them so we've got our replacement ones here I also wanted to inspect pretty much I've noticed 90% of the penetrations on this boat so what I mean by penetrations holes or fittings or fasteners or anything that's been fastened to the boat, the actual core of the boat hasn't been epoxied. So I wanted to just check these to make sure no water is seeping into our hull and if all the penetrations have been epoxied properly from the start. So if they aren't, I'm gonna just put some epoxy in. It's a two second job and then there's no problems ever. Left unattended and left with just relying on a bit of silicon which at some stage will fail uh, you end up with rot in your hull. That's today's job. I'll replace these. There's uh, four of those. I'll also have got an extra one I'm going to put in. So at some stage when we do get a washing machine, we'll have one ready to go. Other one is Seawater Pro. So originally this, like this, this plastic fitting just snapped. Probably me. Probably I put too much thread tape on or tightened it up too much, but it's just plastic. Me and plastic don't go together too well. These plastic fittings were on the intake to the engine and you can see they've split. This one here has cracked. I've noticed I'm not too keen on these anyway. There's very little movement in that valve. It's like the salt water's really affected that. So what I've chosen to do is pretty much in exchange for this piece of plastic, it'll let water flow through one way and not the other way. I think that is a lot more simpler than this big plastic thing. Old Lee here can't over tighten this. It's a bronze fitting and it's a lot more, it's a lot more streamlined too. So we're gonna have a fitting like this as opposed to a big fitting like this. Also what concerns me, we have our bikes and we have a lot of gear at certain stages. And if this was to get bumped by a bike wheel or something, very easily snapped and that's what may have happened. I'm not sure, 100% sure it was just we turned the water maker on and it was leaking. So I don't know what exactly happened there. It could have been a bump, it could have been me over tightening, me using too much thread tape. Either way, 
that's what I'm doing. I'm changing to Groco. So the reason I've got two check valves here is this check valve is our salt water into the system and this check valve is our fresh water into the system. So the idea behind this is so that when the seawater is coming in, it comes in and goes into the filters and into the system and it can't go back into our fresh water. And then when we're not using the seawater and we're fresh water flushing, the fresh water can go through there, through our filters, but it can't come back out through the seawater non-return valve. That's what they're there for. So as far as the seawater pro unit goes, we're really happy with it so far and we haven't had any problems. I haven't used it for years like we did the Rain Man, but I'm pretty sure, apart from a couple of little things like this, which may have been my fault anyway, the unit seems to be powering on and going well and we're just about to go back in and fire it up and give it another good workout for another whole season. It's not a Seawater Pro problem, it's a fitting that may have been broken by myself or me over tightening it or it's just a cheap plastic fitting which I don't like. Not knocking Seawater Pro but that's the way I'm going to go with a bronze check valve, get rid of all this plastic crap, don't like plastic. But I have a plastic boat, so I've got like a certain amount of plastic. We removed the plastic fittings. Next problem that annoyed Dad was whoever installed these did not make them evenly spaced. And while that's not a structural problem, it's a problem to Dad, so he tried to make them more even. So we've got our holes and we've got our core here. So I'm just, I've just cut down an Allen key. It's the only tool I've got at the moment, and I've just put a bevel on it. It just allows me to create uh, it allows me to remove sort of like half inch of the of the actual core which then I'll replace with epoxy so even when we do put our um, through holes in it even if our sealant was to fail it's not going to get into the boat these are dry luckily these ones have got a little bit of moisture in them so we'll let them dry out but uh, left unattended these can create major problems so I usually just go like that Get it in, slowly go around, and I can just remove like so the core, and now I've got like a 12 mil pocket in there which I'll fill with thickened epoxy. So once that's filled with thickened epoxy, once we put the valve in, if it leaks, it's not a problem. We'll just have to spot the leak and reseal it. But uh, every penetration that has any sort of core should be uh, filled like so. One's below waterline. I think it's solid glass anyway, but um, all our main through holes and that were all, well, from what I could see, they're all epoxy. I'm guessing from there down the waterline is solid and here up like a lot of boats are core. Not ideal, I'd prefer to have solid glass to be honest, but hey, this is what we've got. We are filling these holes with penetrating epoxy first. The bell has just put in some penetrating epoxy and it'll absorb into the area and the core around which we're doing. And then I'm just gonna mix up some thickened epoxy and follow up on that. And that'll fill in the actual cavity that we, we remove. So therefore, it will leave us with a solid core of epoxy. Take the first glass. I think that mask is like past helping you. When your masks are worn out, it's time to leave the boat guard. <laughs> Sounds good to me, Captain. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. It's like you're ready to ice a cake. I'm going to put it into this bag. It just makes application a little bit easier. And Bella's going to squeeze it out into our holes. It's not too hot of a day, so it's probably not going to go off too quick. But if you do make a bigger batch up and leave your epoxy in a big hunk like that, tends to go off really quick. You'll know because the heat will build and you'll know you have to get boogieing. So you want to get it right in to fill it right up. Go on, keep going, keep going, keep going. So yesterday we epoxied the holes which these little through holes are going in and today we're just putting them in. So we're gonna goop them up, put them in, screw the back on and then I think we have no more through holes to do. None. We're finished.
we're going back in the water. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to go in the engine room, put the back thing on, screw that on. Dad's going to be outside gluing it on and holding it in place. And well, that is what we're doing. All right, what are you doing there, Captain? Oh, you know, just hoarding. Just little bits of pipe. We have a hot tip for all those sailors who haven't been sailing very long, all the people that think you don't need things. Well, most people throw out their little leftover clippings, but I gather if your pipe blows out or something rubs against it and you're in the middle of nowhere, which has happened to us before, and... Uh, Many yeah, times. So this locker we're not going to use, it's like this deep and it's just pretty dirty locker, so I thought I'd just put our little leftovers of pipes. You know, you can always add a little bit in and join it. It can get you out of trouble. It's a very good idea. It's and good, Look, it's better looking at it than looking for it. Put exactly. It that way. And we have been caught out many, many times. If you've been watching us over the years, you would know that. But I just thought I'd show you and share with you because this guy is very... He's got lots of good little ideas that we forget that people don't do. And a lot of people like just throw out your scraps because they don't want to put it on the boat. And we totally understand that space is a premium. But when you are in the middle of nowhere, you will be very thankful that this is here. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you liked that episode. We are waiting for our precision sail to arrive, which is very exciting. If you two are in need of a sail, then... It's a great time to get Why one. Why is it a great time, darling? Because Precision is holding a spring rush sale right at the moment and they can get you a sale. How long? Four to six weeks. Contact Precision Sales and they'll look after you. Just one thing before we go. We have, Bella and I started our own little brand called Travelling Shells and uh, we are creating little earrings which we have in our ears. And if you've seen the website, the website is on the screen. Go check it out if you are interested. We only have this certain amount, which is 50 pairs. They're actually almost sold out. And well, it's limited time to also purchase them because we will be shipping in one week and that will be it. So if you haven't already, then go check them out. And if you want a pair, then yeah, go get a pair. After we leave here, we won't be able to ship for a while. So those of you asking too, our wish list is still up and going. And again, it'll be available until next week. Anyone who buys us a fishing lure, we're going to write their name on it. And so every time we catch a fish, um, that lure is called whatever your name is. And Taj also has uploaded his first ever YouTube video. So go check it out at Taj Rice. We'll see you later, guys. All right, bye. bye.